So remember, there are certain muscles that is important to know, and they are there are pronators and supinators. Pronators are the pronator teres and pronator quadratus, and the supinator is biceps brachii and supinator. Remember the biceps main function is at the elbow where it flexes the forearm and supinates it. And what is the function of real in a real sense or in day-to-day -day activity? Both these abdus, uh, movements are both these movements are used when opening a bottle with the cork screw. So biceps unscrews the cork and then it pulls the cork out. That is a flexion or action is there. So what are the deforming forces? Deforming forces is biceps and supinator that is inserted in the proximal third of the radius and they act as supinator. Pronator teres originally originating above the elbow medially inserts into the middle third of the radius and it acts as a pronator of the forearm and it acts along with the pronator quadratus. The shaft of the radius, remember, it is three-sided structure with two <coughs> prominent curvatures. One is gradual convexity in the mid portion and more acute curve is at the proximal end near the bicipital tubular CT. So the deviation along the mid portion is commonly referred to as the radial bow. And all the reduction that is done, it is to maintain this radial bow. Without this radial bow or radial curvature, there cannot be supination and pronation to be lost. So how to see the, the positions of the reduction? There are a lot of things have been told and a, a few clues I will give, the radial stalloid and radial tuberosity, it has got a relationship. So the relationship is to be maintained. Then there are certain more landmarks such as ulnar stalloid and its coronoid process approximately. They have certain relationship and that has to be maintained. So this is the same way it has been shown. Now remember how the deforming forces will be deforming the fracture and you have to take care of the deforming forces while you are doing the re reduction and you are maintaining it. So if the fracture is above the insertion of the pronator teres, it means that a radius is supinated and flexed because of unopposed action of the biceps, brachii, and supinator. So proximal fragment is fully supinated. So distal fragment, you have the control, but not the proximal fragment. And so to obtain alignment at the fracture, the distal fragment theoretically should be supinated. In the middle third, we know proximal fra fragment is held in neutral position because supinators and these pronator teres, they balance each other. And so the reduction will be done with the forearm in mid prone position or lower third the same way. But nowadays you remember, we will be telling something that it is usually done in the mid prone for all the fractures practically. Clinical features will be pain, swelling, deformity in the form of angulation and is very a bad curve look very, very frightening for the patient. There will be impaired function, bruising of the skin, and if it is displaced, usually shortening will be there. On inspection, you have to see the attitude. The elbow will be partially flexed, and the patient will be supporting the forearm with the normal hand. There will be swelling, and it has to be noted where the swelling in middle third, lower third, or upper third, the same way, deformity as well. The skin for bruises, ecchymosis, and wound is to be noted. The muscle wasting, 
especially in the old cases, the limbless discrepancy in displaced fracture will be there. What are the signs? The temperature is taken first and it is usually raised. Tenderness over the fracture side is to be noted whether upper, middle or lower third. Swelling deformity is to be confirmed and along with it, the gap in the continuity of the bone, abnormal mobility and the crepitus will be found and limb length discrepancy will be confirmed now. So these are the, some of the examples. Movements and measurements, the movements is not tried even. And the measurement, I have already told whole length, tip of the chromium to the radial steroid. And segmental, the humeral length is from the tip of the chromium to the lateral epicondyle. And radial length from the radial epicondyle to the lateral, to, to the radial steroid, it is wrong, wrongly written here. Okay. Ulnar length, tip of the whole cranium to the ulnar steroid. Neurovascular examination is to be done as usually the radial pulsation and the capillary refilling time and neurological examination usually for the anterior interosseous and posterior interosseous nerve. A special test is done as the springing test. So squeezing one end of the forearm produces pain at the fracture site and you know where is the, where is the fracture. So this is the how will you know the rotation on the x-ray that already I described in detail. I won't be going into a lot of details. Treatment. So close reduction and cast application is fairly good in the case of the children. Remember childhood ob obesity appears to increase the risk of the malreduction. So indications of the conservative treatment of the children, it could be, but remember it should be younger than nine years old usually 10 and above is usually considered to be as good as an adult one angulation less than 15 degree and mal rotation less than 45 degrees is accepted because there is a lot of chance of the remodeling remember if the patient is 10 years old or older and the angulation is more than 10 degrees then this is not acceptable and it should be a case for the surgical intervention. Indications for conservative treatment in adults a bit different. The less than 50% displacement and less than 10 degree of angulation is acceptable. The cutoff aces, it is 10 to 12 years in girls and 12 to 14 years in boys and at this age surgical treatment is strongly recommended. Remember the angulation in the plane of the joint movement is usually acceptable. Position of for immobilization remember it is fracture in upper third that we have told supination mid third mid prone lower third pronation but nowadays the usual way to do is mid prone position for all the fractures that you will be practicing in the hospital. Period of immobilization usually is four to six weeks, but it all depends upon the age and your extra finding on the check x-rays. The protocol for the period of immobilization, what should the patient doing? They should be doing the physiotherapy. Joints which are free from the POP, must be exercised and after removal of course active exercises are encouraged. The reduction technique is the interosseous molding is very important. You have to mold the interosseous, interosseous space so that the radial bow is maintained. So these are the operative indications we won't go in that. The treatment protocol could be should we do plating or intramuscular nailing or K wire fixation or external fixation. So we will come to that, which one is to be chosen. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the open reduction and internal fixation with plates and screws? Advantages are more secure fixation is achieved compared to the intramuscular nail. 
cortical compression is achieved by putting a plate. There are the dynamic compression plates usually, and the union rate has been found to be as high as 95%. Disadvantage is, of course, it requires more exposure at the fracture site, and later on it has to be removed. And there is a lot of debate which one to fix first. It is not very important for us right now. So, osteosynthesis using a dynamic compression plate for the mid shaft fractures, you can see, and it is a very good option for us. When to do? Should we do as early as, or we should wait for some time? The idea is it should be best done as soon as after the injury, if it is pr practicable. Otherwise, swelling will interfere our closure of the wound in operation and also there can be blisters. And once the blisters come, it is very difficult to do within 10, 10 days. And by 10 days, the callus formation starts in the children especially. So, Reduction technique won't be going for the plates. Closure technique is also not important. And there is some recommendation when to do the bone grafting. Usually recommended when more than one third of the circumference of the bone is comminuted, you should put a bone graft primarily at the time of operation. And while you're putting the bone graft, don't put in the interosseous space, closer to interosseous membrane, that will cause the radio ulnar synostosis, both will join together. So this is a open reduction tunnel fixation of the plate. This is again the same, same, it is being done and now this is the final result. Intramedullary nailing, it is not usually recommended in the radius and ulnar fracture. So why it is not preferred, we'll see, not stabilize the rotation factor there, rotation will be possible. There is union rate is very low, so non-union is very common. And intermediate rail do not provide compression across the fracture site. So these are the some of the indication, but still plating is usually preferred. So it can be done. Key wiring also in some of the cases done. We will take up the Montesia fracture dislocation and we'll talk about it till. So Montesia is the fracture of the proximal ulna with disruption of the proximal radio ulnar joint. And remember, it is dislocation or subluxation of the radial edge is very common. And there will be torn ligaments because the joint has been dislocated or subluxated, then the ligaments has to give way. Classification was done by Bado, and there are three extension type, flexion type, and lateral type. So type one, it, it means that the fracture at the proximal or the middle third of the ulna and the radial head is dislocated anteriorly. So it uh, most common in the young, younger adults and the children, but see the radial head, it has gone anteriorly, then it is type one. Type two, fracture of the proximal and middle third of the ulna, and here the radial has gone posteriorly, same fracture, but the radial had gone laterally in type three. There can be types four also, where the radial head can go in any direction and it is associated with fracture radius as well. So this is a bad classification where it goes entirely, this is type one. This is the most common one. So you can see it, lateral type, not very common. This anterior type is very common. There is another classification also that's called Jupiter classification, we won't go in that detail. So what could be symptoms? The symptoms will be same as the forearm bone fractures, but there is only one difference. And the difference will, pain could be or deformity could be at the proximal radio ulnar joint, which will not be found in the usual 
uncomplicated forearm bone fractures. When you examine it, don't forget to examine the superior radioulnar joint to rule out the Montagia fracture dislocation. The rest of the things, it is same as the forearm bone fractures. When you look at the X-rays and whenever you find there is a fracture of the ulna in the proximal third or at the junction of the proximal and the middle third to, and it is displaced, you must be aware that there could be a dislocation of the head of a radius. Remember, it is an emergency, orthopedic emergency, because all dislocations has to be reduced as early as possible. So, this reduction is important. Fracture stabilization can be done later on if you can reduce it and keep it within the confines of the radial nerve joint. But when you operate, usually you don't need to do anything for the subluxation or the dislocation of the radial head. You have to reduce the ulna and most of the time it falls back its, into its original position. But if not, then you have to open it. The complications, remember the compartment syndrome, in open fractures can be an infection and late complications, malunion and nonunion. So another one is Galeagi fracture, a mirror image of the Montesia, where the lower end of the radius, instead of ulna which was there, fractured in the Montesia here, the radius is fractured and there is dislocation of the ulnar head. So this is the fracture of the radial shaft and dislocation of a radio ulnar joint. So remember this Galeagi fracture dislocation and things are very similar. So pain, tenderness, deformity, all will be there. Whenever you see the lower end of the radius is fractured and displaced, you must look at the inferior radial nerve joint in the clinical examination and when you are doing the reading the x-ray you must read the x-ray and look at the distal radial nerve joint as well so when you see the the, the the subluxation of the ulna at the inferior radial nerve joint it is again an orthopedic emergency you have to do it as an urgent basis because dislocation is always an urgent part of the treatment. The complication it is same. So malunion and nonunion is very common unless you reduce it properly and fix it nicely. For any query you can contact me on my mail address shown here. Don't hesitate to give me the feedback. Thank you very much.